Hey guys, welcome to my corner of the internet. Today we're going to be talking about my spiritual journey. Um, quick disclaimer, if you're not spiritual and you don't believe like in higher power or anything, this video probably isn't for you. So go ahead and exit another, the exit button's this one of these ways, I don't know. Anyways, another disclaimer is I'm not saying that my faith and my spirituality is right and yours is wrong and all of these things. Um, I'm just sharing my story with you and how finding spirituality changed my life and how it's brought peace to me. So yeah, disclaimer set and I hope I don't offend anybody. My videos are never to offend anybody so um, I try to be as sensitive as I can with the content that we put out. Anyways, let's get the video started. So as many of you guys know, I grew up Christian, mainly Presbyterian as a child, but I haven't gone to church consistently on Sundays for a really long time. Probably the last time was when I lived in LA, and then when I moved to Denver, when I moved back to Denver, just not that much, and it is what it is. Anyways, how I found spirituality was actually through a family member, the same family member who was down and was like, hey, try this with me and I'll try it with you. It's, um, it was her who introduced um, this book to me back in December 2019 and it's legit like just changed my life. It is called Super Tractor by Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, I read this book like three times already. I've recommended it to everybody that I know and I've had friends who have read it and told me like it was such a good book, it's changed their life and all of these things and in all honesty it was just kind of one of those books that just like fell into my lap. I think my family member told me to read it once before and I like totally forgot about it but I was over at her house like we were hanging out and she like physically handed me the book and she's like hey my client gave it to me I only do audible and I know you like to read so she gave it to me so legit that night um, when I got home I started reading it and I think you know I read the preface the introduction and then chapter one and it was really good and I liked it and I was like okay I can probably read this whole book in like a day but I was like no don't like read it slow, ingest it, blah blah blah. So that's what I did. I have a little white notebook where I was flying with and like writing notes as I was reading this book. Like, it, it's just such a good book. Um, but again, I, I think I've read it like three times now. So for people who don't know me, um, the fact that I'm meditating <laughs> is probably like a shocker to anybody. Um, because I feel like this label of people who meditate, it's like they all eat, they're all vegans and they eat organic and they do yoga and all of these holistic things and okay, like I'm very far from that. Uh, I would be the worst vegan in the world. I don't eat organic, I mean certain things I do and I don't do yoga. I don't even think my body would be able to bend like that anymore. Like, anyways. So, it's funny because I went and I had um, lunch with an old friend and we were catching up and she's like, you're meditating? Like, who are you? You're like the last person in the world that I would have thought that would meditate. I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, that's good. Like, and then she's like, oh, you know, we can go do these things at Red Ox where it's like yoga on the rocks, where it like incorporates meditations and all of these things. And then coronavirus happens. So, I mean, it is what it is. But for those of you who like really struggle with like finding peace throughout the day, I'm telling you meditation brings that peace. And in all honesty, finding the spirituality has definitely made it where I've softened up a lot and to where I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. I have worked on self-love for so long because no one can be harder on me than myself. Like things that you think about me, I've already thought about, like probably like beat you to that. 
hours ago, moments ago, days ago, years ago, you know what I mean? But um, finding meditation and finding time to reflect and all of these things, it does help you learn to be more kind to yourself. And that's definitely something that all of us could use is finding, I think we're so like, we're more aware of like being kind to other people, but we forget to be kind to ourselves. And it's sad because it's like, how can you say all of these mean things about yourself, but all of these kind things about somebody else? And how can you truly, honestly love somebody else when you hate yourself so much and like loathe everything about you? And in all honesty, before meditation and like uh, writing and just getting all of my feelings out again, quick side note, I used to write a lot when I was younger and then I stopped, but I started writing again. And that's kind of been like a big emo emotional release for me too. And a lot of self-reflection, but you don't really realize how emotionally blocked off you are until you really take a step back and you look into your life and you're just like, oh wow. Um, and it wasn't just me that's emotionally blocked off. I think a lot of people are, a lot of my friends are, but we were very aware, but just not to the extent of where I was, if that makes any sense. Like I knew I was emotionally blocked off. I already knew like I had a wall built taller than the Great Wall of China, like so thick, like nobody could come bulldozing down these walls. Um, that's that, that's, that's who I am. But I think when you realize finally and something clicks, you're just like, that is so not healthy and that's not a good place to be at. You start to work on those things. And it's funny cause you know, you, come you have these mentalities of don't feel because that's how our parents raised us like when we were sad or when we were crying or like when we got hurt it was like oh just brush it off it's fine why are you crying or when you're in trouble and you're crying it's like what did you do right for you to be crying like you're the one that fucked up like what the hell why are you crying kind of thing um and i think that there was some trauma i don't want to say trauma but there's some hurt and some scars left behind from that mentality and there's things that you have to cope with and things that you have to heal from because you can't play the victim and i'm not saying i've ever played the victim but there's this method in the book that gabby teaches Okay, so in the book, it talks about the choose again method, and I think it's one of the first methods that she talks about. And basically, it makes you more aware of your feelings throughout the day, your emotions, and all of these things. And I never really realized how unaware I was about my feelings and um, how I was feeling and why I was feeling this and um, where these feelings were stemming from and stuff like that and how many times throughout the day I felt very uncomfortable and me trying to figure out why I felt uncomfortable and what triggered that and like working through a lot of it um and in all honesty the first <laughs> couple times was really rough where I was just like I don't want to do this um it's fine I just clam back up um but I truly wanted to get better and I truly wanted to feel good um, so I worked through it. So the choose again method basically is acknowledge the feeling that made you, that you're feeling, um, excuse the feeling and basically try to feel, find a different feeling or thought that is better than the feeling that you're feeling at the moment. Um, so that's what I would do is I would feel these weird, uncomfortable feelings and a lot of them throughout the day and I would be like okay I would excuse the feeling and I would thank the universe for the thought and I would say I would rather choose to live and feel happiness and love and I would try to choose for the next feeling but then I would also try to figure out okay what just happened to trigger that uncomfortable emotion in my 
body. And I mean, it's July now, and I started doing this in December, so it's, it's been about eight months of doing this, and I'm not like perfect, but I definitely am in a better place um, emotionally, mentally, like whatever you want to call it. And like I said, I find this really cool sense of like peace throughout the day and even when I start to feel anxious um, or anger or just not a good f mostly anxiety or anger I do the kundalini um, meditation peace begins with me peace begins with me and take like deep breaths peace begins with me peace begins with me and <laughs> I think Elizabeth see me do this so many times and she finds it funny but it really does help you because it's not like I'm living in just anxiety for a long time and and I don't want to call it anxiety because I know people who really truly suffer from anxiety but where I just start to feel anxious it does calm me or if I'm having a really hard time with my feelings or I'm feeling very overwhelmed I will legit just kind of excuse myself find a quiet place and just meditate and find a moment of peace where I can just kind of like shut down my brain and just find peace and for everybody who thinks oh I can't meditate meditating's not for me blah 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 like I was that person trust me like I am that person where my brain's going a thousand miles an hour and my body's trying to keep up and like before I finish one task I'm thinking about the next three tasks that have to be done and it's not easy at first and it gets easier the more you practice but it really kind of breaks down to how bad do you want it and how bad do you want to find that sense of peace and that sense of calm in your life um, and I feel like this book was brought to me and put in my life for a reason and I found spirituality and again I'm not saying I'm not Christian anymore because I go on my walks every day and my morning walks are my time where I pray I still pray you know and I reflect and stuff like that so um, to me spirituality and my faith just kind of came together and fit and it works for me and yeah it might not work for you but I recommend everyone to read this book and really don't just read it and be like well fuck it whatever mumbo jumbo but like really try to read the book and do the steps and try to I don't want to say try to be better because who am I to tell you that you're not a good person like not me but I mean if you want some change in your life you it's up to you to do it I definitely believe we all have the life that we want because it's up to you to give yourself that life and this book definitely changed my life for the better um, and I wanted to get better and I wanted I think this was the piece of my life that I was missing, that I didn't know I needed. Anyways, I think I kind of covered everything about my spiritual journey. I'm, again, still meditating a couple times a day. If not, if I can't meditate twice a day, I do meditate for sure at night before I go to bed. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to tap that subscribe button and that notification bell because we upload every Tuesdays and Fridays. And stay tuned. I think I have one more video and then it'll be Casey's journey. Thanks guys. Bye.